Dr. Al Hopkins talks about canine parvovirus infection. Canine parvovirus is a new disease on the American scene. It never existed apparently before 1977. Symptoms in dogs include loss of appetite, a high fever, vomiting, usually bloody diarrhea, and the dog is very, very sick. The disease is caused by a virus that probably is a mutation of a cat virus, but is not caused by cats, nor spread from cats, nor are cats even susceptible. It's a very fatal disease, particularly in young and old dogs. A vaccine has been produced, but it's of relatively short duration. However, in an area where the disease becomes prevalent, it's very important to have your animal vaccinated. Prompt diagnosis and treatment is essential if the animal is to survive. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Dr. Ray Polly talks about choosing a puppy. When you're going out to look at a puppy, try to look at the entire litter if possible. You want to pick the active puppy, the puppy that's uh, coming up to the front of the cage, the one that's very active. You don't want to pick the one that's sleeping in the back of the, of the cage or kennel. You want to pick the larger pup. You don't want the runt of the litter. Everybody feels sorry for the little runt and likes to take that one home, but that may not be the very healthy pup. You should be able to handle the puppy. Uh, it should be very friendly. You should turn, be able to turn him over and tickle his tummy, and he should uh, uh, lick your hand and be very friendly to you. You should pick a pup with a clean, glossy coat. You don't want a real thin, run-down looking animal. Uh, you don't want a lot of runny eyes. And most importantly, when you're all done, you've picked out this pup, take it to your veterinarian for an examination, because there are some things that uh, you might have missed that your veterinarian should pick up in order to make that puppy a healthy addition to your family. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Tips for Foreign Travelers, the topic of Buck Sharman, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. This is more than just a tip for foreign travelers. This is a plea for help. Please help to protect the U.S. food supply. Travelers carry food with them wherever they go. Salamis, sausage, hams, they're all good. Every year, we confiscate almost 90 tons of prohibited meat items and passenger baggage coming into this country. Many of these meat items contain viruses of foreign animal diseases. Diseases such as foot and mouth disease, African swine fever, all pose a threat to our livestock industry. So again, this is a plea. Do not bring foreign animal products into the United States. They could create a disaster for our livestock industry. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Dr. Leo Bustad talks about the benefits of pets with the elderly. One of the big problems that the elderly have is loneliness. Uh, also an, another problem is that of being needed. They, they feel that they are no longer needed. An animal will furnish them a reason for existence because they have an animal to feed, it organizes their life, they have to feed it on a schedule, they take it for walks, on walks they're introduced to other people, it also gives them a subject to talk about other than their own ills, and also this animal makes no judgments on them, gives them unconditional love at a time when they're about the only thing that gives them unconditional love, they're very forgiving, no matter how they look, uh, how crippled they might be, the animal uh, still loves them and, and accepts them, We're happy to see them. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Bonnie Beaver, doctor of veterinary medicine, tells us what to expect from a new kitten. A new kitten is a ball of fur, which is also a ball of energy. Most new kittens in a household will be very active and like to do a lot of playing. In this regard, they need things that they can chase and things that they can roll and tumble with. Other pets may be present in the house. Usually, a gradual introduction works best, confining the new kitten to a room first and then gradually opening the door. Because the kitten comes litter trained from its mother, this is usually not a problem. However, sharpening claws can be. 
It is important to have a scratching post in the house so that the kitten will learn to use it as the place to groom its claws rather than a selected piece of furniture. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Adding a cat to your pet family, the topic of veterinarian Dr. Bonnie Beaver. When a new cat comes into a family with old pets, it is very important to adjust both of the animals to the situation. The easiest way is to confine the new cat to a single room with food, water, and litter. Then, after a week or so, open the door and gradually let the cat find its own way out. This allows the cat security within the room and yet gradually explore new areas. One problem that may occur is when an older cat is already within the household. The old cat can also be confined to a room and allowed to gradually reintroduce itself into the family. Some old cats do not accept new ones, and this can be a problem. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Dr. Stanley Aldrich, president of the American Veterinary Medical Association, discusses blindness in pets. When first confronted with a pet losing its sight, the owner may never have considered what it means for a pet to be blind. Most blindness is gradual in its development, so the pet has begun to adapt by using its other senses. Dogs and cats have far better senses of smell and hearing than humans, and being down on all four legs makes them less fearful of falling. For these reasons, a blind pet is not so incapacitated while in its home environment. The common causes of blindness are cataract and retinal disease. Fortunately, cataract is correctable by surgery. If you suspect your pet is losing its vision, your veterinarian can perform the simple eye examination to determine blindness. A blind pet is not as disturbed by its loss of vision as most owners think and should be able to live out its lifespan in a sheltered environment. Man and Animals is a public interest presentation of this station and the AVMA. Birth Control for Dogs, the topic of John McCarthy, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. The best birth control device for dogs is the commonly used leash. A responsible owner that does not allow their female pets to roam loose during her heat period will prevent her from becoming pregnant. Of course, a surgical procedure called a spay or an ovarial hysterectomy can be performed on a female dog or a castration on a male dog to prevent unwanted pregnancies. There are also drugs that can be given to female dogs during their heat period. Your veterinarian should be consulted, however, before the use of these drugs. Unwanted dogs being born are a serious problem today. The veterinary profession hopes that you will do everything you can to prevent more of them. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Holiday Safety for Pets, the topic of Al Hopkins, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. One of the main problems veterinarians see concerns the feeding of pets of all the leftovers of the holiday feast that can produce all kinds of gastrointestinal upsets. Another item that can't be overlooked is the propensity of puppies to chew on electric cards and for some reason the new electric card that goes to the Christmas tree is a favorite subject. One thing that might not occur to most people is that the stress of house gas can produce various behavior problems in their pets, particularly cats. They will begin to mark their territory again by urinating in strange places all over the house. It should be understood that this is a natural reaction of a cat to a stressful situation. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Dr. Stanley Aldrich, president of the American Veterinary Medical Association, tells us about common poisons around the home. Pets are nosy little creatures and probably more susceptible to poisoning than people. Poisons commonly available are chemicals, insecticides, plants, foods, and rarely gases. Many pets who ingest poisons do the natural thing, that is, induce vomiting. Don't leave it to nature to cure known poisoning, however. 
If your pet has consumed any amount of a toxic substance, read the instructions for emergency treatment. In many cases, inducing vomiting is the first step. If this is what is needed, a simple method is to make a mixture of mustard and warm water and force the pet to drink it. If uncertain what to do, call either a poison control center, your veterinarian, or a hospital. Then, once the emergency treatment is administered, take the pet to your veterinarian for any follow-up measures that need to be done. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the AVMA. Dogs and Cats in Cold Weather, the topic of Ray Polly, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. Should I leave my animal outside? This is a question we're often asked in veterinary practice. Uh, I think regardless of the breed, an animal can acclimate very well to the cold outside environment as long as it has adequate housing. I think the important thing is the animal must be kept either in all the time or out all the time. It's the in-between that is hard on the animal. And in the animal that's outside, you have to watch the water supply, though, because freezing of water can be a problem. In our practice, uh, some of the things we see associated with cold weather are feet problems. Ice and salt are very dangerous for an animal's feet and can cause problems. In cats, uh, they have a very thin ear and they're very susceptible to frostbite. So be careful in letting your animal outside too long. And in cold weather, if it's below freezing, I suggest you put a sweater on your animal. It might prevent a lot of problems. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Veterinarian Dr. D.L. Proctor tells us about caring for the older horse. The older horse's ration is composed of two parts, the maintenance portion to support the horse and the work portion to provide energy for his activities. In the older horse, we can usually disregard the growth and reproduction components. The older horse's ration is relatively low in protein. The ration must have bulk. It should be palatable. We find that crushed or crimped oats are desired as they have approximately 10% more feeding value than is found in whole oats. The most important part of the ration is hay. Good quality, green, leafy, early cut hay, when properly cured, is very desirable. It contains the vitamins and calcium necessary for good nutrition. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. D.L. Proctor, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, discusses watering your horse. Watering is most important, especially in periods of hot weather. The horse's body is approximately 10% water. The horse needs five to six gallons of water per day for maintenance, more for heavy work. Horses need approximately four level tablespoons of salt to help maintain the electrolyte balance. Without proper water in the tissues, the exchange of tissue fluids and cellular nutrition is impaired and the electrolyte balance is upset. A horse often, after heavy work, must be given water in relatively small amounts, never more than one to one and a half gallons at a time. And this should be given at 10 minute intervals until he is cooled out properly and his thirst is satisfied. Thank you, Dr. Proctor. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Veterinarian Dr. Buck Sharman talks about mobilizing to fight disease outbreaks. Should a foreign animal disease gain entry into our multi-billion dollar livestock industry, it is essential that we are prepared in advance to control and eradicate the disease. Diseases such as foot and mouth disease, African swine fever, African horse sickness, are moving on a worldwide basis and pose a daily threat to our livestock industry. USDA has an organization called Emergency Programs with headquarters located at Hyattsville, Maryland. This organization has the responsibility to be prepared to deal with any disease outbreak in this country. And they have formed five teams that are strategically located in the country. These teams are charged with being responsible for being on the scene within 24 hours from the time the outbreak is diagnosed. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Veterinarian Dr. Ray Polly tells us about health danger signals in pets. Many times as veterinarians we're asked, when should I take my animal to the veterinarian? Uh, I will give you some danger signals to look for. Probably the most important is a lack of pep. 
An animal that suddenly becomes uh, very uh, listless, lays around a lot, doesn't greet you when you come home, that's a sign that probably you should have something looked into, uh, particularly if uh, that animal is running a temperature. is a very important danger signal. A refusal to eat would be another one. Animals normally do not miss many meals, and if they miss a meal or two, I would be very concerned. Uh, drinking excess water, changing their habits to uh, where they're normally drinking so much a day to suddenly drinking much, much more is a very bad danger signal. And then some important things that are very obvious, such as cough, vomiting, and diarrhea, are all signs that they should be taken to the veterinarian. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Veterinarian Dr. John McCarthy tells us about preventive dentistry in pets. It starts as it does with you and I, with an annual physical, which in this case is done by your veterinarian. He will probably suggest periodic cleaning of your pet's teeth, which in most cases will require a short-acting anesthetic. Small dogs, especially the toy breeds, are more commonly affected by an accumulation of tartar than larger dogs. Some owners do find that they can help their dogs by periodically brushing the dog's teeth. An old toothbrush may be used and some sort of a tooth powder or even baking soda. Soft diets may contribute to the accumulation of tartar in the dog, but there is no indication that diet is a major factor. Man and Animals is a public interest feature of this station and the American Veterinary Medical Association.